about her work and identified what Kelly thinks is the summary. <laughs> <laughs> that there's not a lot of point for me to discuss the subject. And in fact, it's kind of maybe um, a new territory to talk on, it, uh, to talk about how the work operates or mm -hmm. what the consequences are of the decisions you yeah, made. So look at me. I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I have a couple of thoughts about um, how the work operates, um, questions about decisions that the artists made that are unusual decisions, I think, um, questions about um, tendencies that are familiar to me from things that I've been interested in that appear different. I mean, their guise is different here, mm -hmm. but the, the drive seems to be something I share with you. And I wanted to, to, to broach some of those things and see, um, see what you think. Um, so my question is, can we kind of include everybody at the same time so it's not <clears throat> limited just to us? What do you, what do you mean? If, um, if I ask you a question and, and you answer and somebody wants to ask more oh, about yeah, it, yeah, that's yeah. okay, that's yeah. okay. So yeah. if I ask Kelly a question and she says something that I don't, um, uh, that doesn't bother me, but bothers you, then, um, <laughs> <laughs> spread it out a little bit. Um, so let me think now. Um, in the first place when I came, I didn't come to the opening because I, I deliberately wanted to see it with no human bodies in it, or maybe just one or two small human bodies, as small as possible. And um, so that I could, because I knew that there was sort of a, an illusion taking place, and I didn't want the, the, you know, the, the um, confusion of, of reality to interfere with this illusion. And I, I was um, amazed at how extensive the exhibition is, how ambitious it is, how sophisticated it is, how many um, things are considered and dealt with. And in that sense, even though maybe in square footage terms it's not the biggest installation in the world, it's an enormous installation because of the number, maybe the, the angles that, the positions Kelly has st stood in to look at the subject which she named that subject. It's almost as though she identified the subject and then photographed it, changing her lens as mm -hmm. she went around. So it's almost as though the rooms have a different focal length or a different mm -hmm. focus it's in the way photography does that. Uh, when I first saw it, I thought there were three rooms. But when I came back to look at it with Kelly, she took me around to the back, and I saw the text on the wall, which maybe you haven't seen. So now I think there's four rooms. Why didn't you say what that text is? Um, it is, uh, it's a description, it's in the brochure. No, it's not, sorry. Okay, I'll tell it, you I'll tell, tell it. Okay. Um, it's text, it's vinyl text, it's, yeah, the font is about that high. It's about an inch and a half high. It's a little piece of text on the wall. It's almost the same color as the wall, so it's quite invisible. And it describes, I think it's lifted from um, mm -hmm. an account mm -hmm. of the artists at the gallery 291 who would, how they used a room of another, or of a designer, yeah, an interior, interior, interior decorator, decorator, who had a room across the hall and he would lend his space it's to like them a back room, yeah. when he was traveling. Yeah. Uh, so it indicates that this gallery, which is so well um, represented here, actually depended on the support of other space and another person, maybe many people. And it describes that on very cold days, the artists would collect around the coal stove in the interior decorator's studio to keep warm. So in a way, it's the origin of the whole work. You know, the word underglow is actually on the other side mm, that's of nice. where they're sitting around the fire keeping warm because you can't work if you're cold and you can't have a gallery if you're mm. cold. and you. So there's this kind of physical support that's described in that text. Mm -hmm. um, so if I say there's four rooms, they, they have a huge range of representation from the text, which is absolutely literal. I mean, it's literature in a sense, it's writing, to the room that's the um, reproduction of a photograph or the attempt to reproduce the view that you would have as you look at a photograph, which is very, very literal. Kelly only um, interpreted 
black and white and gray into these paints and fabrics. To this room, which is <clears throat> based on research of the history of this building, which is in the history of the world, it's not even a piece of dust. <laughs> um, to that room, which is abstract, really, and as you walk through that room, you, you, you because of the um, difficulty in determining whether something is flat or dimensional, whether it's pushing out or pushing in, whether it's colored or black and white, all of those things which um, arouse your perceptual tools at a very high level um, makes it a very phenomenological experience. And so you go from something that's all history, which I think it happens in the brain, because history isn't here, to something that is so here. And one person does this and puts it in one installation. Um, I'm probably more familiar with one person choosing one of those ways to approach a subject mm. and working on one way in a kind of a commitment to uh, an approach. Um, so my first question is, since you so deliberately did this, I have four views, and there's probably more views, there's little views inside mm -hmm. of those views. Mm -hmm. um, what's the value in that to um, saturate the subject with ways of looking? Um, I think I'm really intrigued about the, the, how objects and um, interiors can have this kind of conversation with each other, and there's like a like a, di a dialogue that, that can happen. And so, um, and then there's and then it creates these different levels to access. Like I'm I'm really interested in creating like this initial. You might have a and it's sensory experience when you see the exhibition, and then if you're interested, there's all these these layers and other conversations between the pieces. And uh, so they would never be separate. Um, I don't know. Never, never. Uh, they would seldom be separate. They're, you choose not to. I mean, this is very. The, is this middle room is have. very presentation house specific. So. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I design, you know, I designed the work for this space specifically, but I do think these two rooms could exist in another space, but in, a, in another um, gallery interior, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I mean, I, I did like this kind of lineage of, of, of um, contemporary historical and then this really local lineage. I liked, I liked encompassing all those things, and that that there was. You know, also this, the temporality of um, exhibition installs, and the wall is there for a very short period of time. The chairs change, you know, the lights move, um, and and so, yeah, it, it was it was I guess emphasizing again that um, the subject is usually the background. Your yeah. subject is the, yeah, the like right. the subject I'm addressing is usually the background. It's not usually the subject, so the background becomes the subject. <coughs> So I guess maybe in I, I don't know that I use the term background, but I see them as as frames to a certain extent. Well and I guess they, like the lighting always seem like you don't really know ever notice the lighting and the the like you know, all those the chairs, you never really think about the chairs or the Yeah. I, I guess as of the National Gallery for one reason or another, I saw the the um, Matisse's and the Monet's, mm -hmm. etc. And they have these really um, fancy gold frames, these are big yeah. bourgeois frames. Yeah. And the impulse is to take those frames away, to liberate them from those frames. And this, this room here, uh, Matisse being a kind of a common due to, to the observation. It seems to be a frame for that work, mm -hmm. whereas the white gallery is also a frame of contact for the work. Right. And even this room here is um, provides context right. and a frame for mm -hmm. whatever work is right. shown. That's good. So Kelly's thinking of that, don't you think that? I think so. That's what. Yeah. I said to see it as, as framing. Right. right. I, always, I, I, guess, I, I guess I was thinking 
the show that I did at SFU was more like frames within frames, and I was thinking this is about more of like rooms within rooms, or walls within walls. So I guess because because the yeah, the, but I yeah see what you're saying. The frame reference works in here as well. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to respond to what you said, Liz, about there being four rooms. Because I kind of see the, the space behind this room as a fifth room, as another, as a sort of a reference to the fact that it is. But that's, yeah, that's yeah, where the other piece is. Is, yeah. is behind. Okay. Is behind yeah. that room. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. That's fine. And did anybody want to do six? <laughs> yeah. Six rooms. <laughs> <laughs> well, easily there could be more. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. 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 it really, I walked in and what I was like, let's get it. A room has um, so when I arrived, I came, when I came that day by myself, I came in here, it was in the daytime, and I came in this way, and I knew about that, I didn't know about this, and I didn't know about that, but I knew about this because I had seen the book that Kelly was using to photograph it. Mm -hmm. And strangely, I was just visiting Kelly, no, she was visiting me, and she had the book, and I said, look at that weird she gallery. Didn't know. You, did, you didn't no, know I, didn't I was, was using something. that. Yeah. I said, look at that weird yeah. gallery there. They, it took them a while to figure it out, I said, to figure out that we don't need the um, decorative elements mm -hmm. when the art will do the work. You know, the mm -hmm. art now is going to take over. Modern art is going to take over everything. And we and it's going to push all other fifi things away, mm -hmm. all frou-frou things will disappear. But in this room, the frou-frou is still there, and it's sort of an interesting mm -hmm. moment. I also didn't know the gallery was open for such a short time. 1905 so to 1917. all this for a mere 12 yeah. years or 15 years. So when I came in, I knew about this room, so I was sort of super curious to look at it. Plus, it's um, so attractive. Don't you go over to it. Um, it's probably the small door because it's a peekaboo thing. Nothing's mm -hmm. better than a peekaboo. Mm -hmm. If you might see something illicit or mm -hmm. hidden. <laughs> And so there's the peekaboo small door, and then there's this, um, you know, the monotone, which is, um, it's not just that photographs have monotone, and I thought I was going towards a photograph, but in a room when someone decorates their house white on white, or do you ever see blue and blue? It's usually white on white. My mom used to do. It's so, um, <laughs> it's so the control of using a monotone in all of the parts of the room is so astounding that I feel comfortable and safe in a monotone. There's no fighting between colors and there's no, you don't have to do association and say, oh, this reminds me of when I was a child or anything, it's just a monotone. So, especially black and white. So I went over there and it's sort of like, um, it's like a big treat and you look in the door and then you think, gee, I can even walk into this photograph. And it's kind of like going to Disneyland mm -hmm. or into, uh, or Pioneer Village. Pioneer Village, yeah. <laughs> These situations that are where every um, every possible trick is being played on you mm -hmm. to uh, for you to have a bit of time travel, a bit of to space out a little bit. And so immediately, I, I was reminded of these. Um, humans that I worked with who were reenacting, I, I mean not rooms, but humans who were uh, dressing up as Civil War mm -hmm. soldiers right. or right. Uh, <coughs> Courier de Bois or First Nations or Iroquois, you know. And um, I photographed them partly because um, I was curious about their, where they got the sense of entitlement to put history on their bodies, but also because the childish part of me was envious of them that they could dress up mm -hmm. and, and commit to something so um, slightly ludicrous to say that they are a 16th century character. It's kind of perpetual Halloween. <clears throat> perpetual Halloween, um, you don't ask permission. Mm -hmm. it, it's a big fat lie and you never yeah. say it's a big okay. fat lie. Okay. And so when I was in there, I thought this is a big fat lie and Kelly's put a lot of energy into this <laughs> big fat lie. And um, the other thing about reenactors is that ultimately what drives them is their conservatism because they don't like change. Mm -hmm. So they, they hold and they hold it and they put it on and right. reenact it and they repeat. So there's all this repetition that, that you do if you're, sometimes if you're not mentally healthy, you do a lot mm -hmm. of repetition. So what do you think about repetition, um, a literal representation, uh, that copying, memeticism, that um, um, 
decision to not invent, let's say, and not look to the future, that mm -hmm. decision to look back, that in so many instances is very stultifying and very, um, it has so many negative consequences, but you've committed to do it there. Is that? Yeah, I mean, I think that we, I think I, I really like this, um, like, perpetual reproduction and how doing research on a subject and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're looking through books, you're like, you might encounter, you know, like, how can you encounter your research? And it's usually through some form of reproduction. And then to, uh, so I guess maybe I'm just stopping it, the reproduction for the moment, but then it just gets put to another reproduction because somebody photographs, gets, back, gets turned back into a photograph. Right, so it, it's just this, I guess I'm really fascinated by the, you know, how, you know, how much our lives get mediated through these photographs. So how much, um, if we have a certain drive or some lack or some longing, uh, we perform it through looking at historical photographs and historical figures and historical events? Well, I, I mean, I wouldn't, not necessarily, his, Historical, because in the because it's not historical when you're watching it on YouTube anymore. And, you know, like it is, but it isn't. It's like mediated through this contemporary framework. So, I mean, that's what I find fascinating about um, you know how photographs are uh, occupy our lives. Like how they're you know they can be historical, but they're they exist in this you know. In, a, in contemporary reality as well. Yeah, but there's something about the, you know, how many times have I opened the big book on Eileen Gray and looked at her bedroom or her living room and just felt so um, bereft of authenticity because I'm not Eileen Gray living in her house. And so there's this um, strange abandonment <coughs> of the present tense and a total abandonment of the future as I romanticize Eileen Gray and her, um, her existence at this very beginning of modernism that seems like such a brilliant moment. Mm -hmm. But then how do you feel when you encounter one of her reproductions of one of her tables? Or I don't call it Eileen Gray anymore. Um, I have no feeling for that. Mm. Um, and my feeling is never sad. I never, so I have a drive or a longing mm. to um, go into the photograph and inhabit that mm -hmm. space uh, in black and white too, mm -hmm. so I don't know what I would do. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd be halfway there. But um, uh, so there's this, um, I'm assuming that there's a longing um, or a drive in a person as they proceed through life to um, conserve, to uh, say, okay, I understand this, this, and this, let's stay there. Let's not mm -hmm. prove changing, let's not have new ideas, let's, uh, Name five things and stick with them and fight for them. Even mm -hmm. so, when you when you make a room like that, it almost is a expression of that determination to hold and freeze a moment. I know you're saying it's about the reproduction of imagery in books mm -hmm. and so on, but you've actually performed the reenactment yourself. Mm -hmm. But then, in the end, it exists as a exists as a documentation. So it goes back into. After the show is yeah, like it's yeah. kind of yeah. It's also a certain kind of sculptural construction, yeah. And then you show the, the, the its construction going behind. So she shows the line of it. <coughs> well, she shows she an appreciation for the aesthetics of of the the not just the illusion that she's constructed inside, but the mode of construction that you see from behind. That she, re she reveals the So that redeems, that redeems it? What's going on right now? Uh, with us here? Well, I'm just us thinking. I, you no, but there's all this talk about framing and the document and this and that. You describe these two rooms as potentially being able to go to other places. But this middle room is like this kind of. I mean, to me, this is the frame. Like, this room is the frame. But it's a frame that has a history. So it's like a frame within a frame. Like that's happening in here, yeah. and that's still going on because we're sitting here using this yeah. space. I mean, right now the chairs are configured like this. Yeah, it's just another layer to the frame. Like, 
So to me, like those rooms seem to me like the alien gray experience you're having, but this here is something else. And what Maybe, is, what I don't know what that is. is. I'm just wondering if you see I'm it as- I'm kind of interested in this room because I feel like it's a little bit of like tour of bad aesthetic decision from hey, presentation yeah, house history kind of. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm kind of interested in that because mm -hmm. these two rooms are like very aesthetic and then this one kind of seemed to put in some of those elements that would be like off, like having mm -hmm. some black, um, what, what, black baseboards, and then these which aren't on, right? Just sort of like but they're dead. but they're lit by the new by the new lighting. Yeah, it's like a wannabe modern gallery. Yeah, I was like curious about the chairs. <laughs> actually, yeah, like I was curious about the chairs too. Are those like original chairs? Yeah, these are the chairs that were in the uh, slides that I looked at. Yeah, amazingly enough, they're, there's. I mean, they're really similar to the new ones too, but. Uh, yeah. But yeah, everyone is curious about that. Like, what do you think about that? Like, this room being the sort of the local the, the, representation, or like the not aesthetically pleasing room. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I like kind of like this room because you might totally miss it. Yeah, like that's of interest to me that it's 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 uh, you know these de these details are usually meant to be inconspicuous. You know, and in the in the eighties, those were much more inconspicuous, but now they're more conspicuous because we've got so streamlined. This is also a confused identity, or you know, it's a hybrid mm -hmm. place because these things didn't happen at yeah. the same time. Yeah. So it's a collection of these um, uh, aspirations, mm -hmm. these aspirations to make a sort of a seamless display or a groovy display. Yeah, and also it really addresses like this thing about looking in an archive and also it doesn't, it's not always accurate what you, what you just, you know, what I decided to use might, you know, might not be accurate. Like there was one photo that wasn't really presentation house, um, but I decided to use it anyway because I was interested in that, that you, that that's possible that you misinterpret archives, you know. I'm curious about these little black squares. Those are plugs. Or oh, represent are. plugs, okay. yeah. Black plugs. And I'm here about the people. So what, right. you, what is your interest in galleries? Like what what is your, your relationship to galleries? Apart from simply academic or academic. Um, I don't think I have a particular interest in them, but um, well I like I like that they're this uh, I'm very, I feel like I, I like, I mean, it's, it's this um, really intentional place of display. And uh, I like this whole, like the meandering experience of museums and galleries and, you know, the peacefulness. I really like researching them because of the experience of them um, and how, uh, y you know, like this, the cube, the white cube now is kind of this more neutral, neutral space. and. And, and, and how that, I mean, I consider that kind of an asset to the, to the work, whereas this would have been so heavy handed in its relationship to work. Like, you know, it's just like this, this interesting um, pedestal. And, uh, you know. It seems to me that the connotations of putting this in, in presentation house gallery is very loaded, though, given what we have here aspire to do and the canons of photography and all of that. So it's not like just simply a time warp or a, a replica in, uh, without a context. And I, I think a lot of people who come to our gallery are repeat visitors, so they have a like a bodily memory even of the space and so where are the two galleries and why is this door like this? And so there is a kind of experience that is brought to bear in looking at this that is not the same as, you know, museums are putting artist studios into exhibitions and mm -hmm. that kind of a, like a historical reenactment type like gesture. A collector sensibility, it seems like being a collector. Um, that's a good point. So that I, in Presentation House, this is very particular that it wouldn't be the same. As well, that was my hope yeah. that it would yeah, have no, that kind of resonance. Well, I was, I was maybe, completely wrong yeah. to say that this is the frame looking at those because, of course, those, like the early, I mean, Presentation House is framed by them. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, and yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a, 
Yeah. It's not in stasis. It's yeah. kind of this. Yeah, the actual mm -hmm. the, the actual gallery itself is. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. So it's a very particular. <laughs> I mean, it was like that was the, the appeal to showing it in um, presentation of uh, the work. Kind of felt like it was a really uh, good fit for what happens here. And I also thought there was just I wanted to add something about this room in particular that in terms of reading the, the photograph and by making it a reenactment of a space, and rather than like holding and conserving, which as Lynn said, I think it's more like a close reading of the photograph. So what one of the things that you do when you come to presentation as is ask to do is kind of close reading. And the kind of deconstruction and rebuilding of that space is like an incredible attention mm -hmm. to that image. And I think that was quite interesting if you consider the room as a kind of close reading of that image. Yeah, and it always ends up being kind of an approximation because you can never really, mm -hmm. really get it that accurate, you know. Yeah. Well, I think you do capture, though, the quality of photo reviewer, mm -hmm. which is a bit of a fuzzy sort of mm -hmm. soft quality, which is kind of hard, hard to imagine how you could create that. But mm -hmm. I think you did. The light, it's the, the scrim. Right. The scrim does a... Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm curious why you chose to frame the presentation house by something I would describe as New York. Um, it, well, the research came out of being at, in a residency in New York. Okay. Yeah. And that's. Uh, yeah. But it's sort of New York as broadcast itself. Modern yeah, yeah. No, broadcast no, itself course. in every small town. Yeah. DC wants to but I'm just thinking in terms of, as a framing device, advice to look at. Presentation house. What does it say about presentation? Well, it's very ironic that this is um, an old house. <laughs> right. It's called presentation, presentation. Yeah. house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think it also has a, kind of a relationship to the fact that um, this gallery is, is planning a new building. So what what is presentation house gallery as a space, and how are we imagining this new life and uh, what, I, I mean, I, I guess I have been thinking about this exhibition as being a bit of a critique of, of the white cube as well. Mm -hmm. And maybe this <coughs> section kind of draws that out a bit. Uh, and that it's not only is this, this older 1905 space frou-frou, but it, a lot of amazing things happened in that 15 square feet of space mm -hmm. to scale, right? actual size. And as we know, when we look at modern new galleries, the architects really have all kinds of different ways of adding foo foo, you know, <laughs> through curved fists and the yeah. glass. And, you know, it's not a neutral space. In fact, that mm -hmm. idea of the white cube and even how you enter galleries. And I, I sort of thought that that was your intention was to draw out also the, the kind of the impact of any kind of display. Um, a space that's designed for exhibition display and the conventions of that. Or the well, and of that. also presentation house kind of occupies this historical and contemporary uh, aesthetic. Or like I, I always, I always relate the sound of the floor to presentation house. Like the floor is hollow, and you know, like there's these certain things that this, this historical aspect, but it's a contemporary space. So, yeah, I, I think that. It encompasses those ideas already, and then you know. So, are you critiquing um, exhibitions spaces in some way um, as decor or like, you, the is armature dated? of them? Huh? For you, is this dated? And is this dated? Like, is this dated? You know what I mean? Like this yeah. room, is this old-fashioned? <laughs> like, can we go back to this? Could we ever show again in this? Or I mean, and sure, but then it, it would be so effective that it like is this carpet old style. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> this is a thesis that she's answered answered those questions when mm -hmm. that room is. Right. That yeah. room's the answer to yeah, like that room's the answer to my um, mm -hmm. my entrapped feeling there. You know right. that I was drawn in by <clears throat> some lack I have, and then I went in. And my lack will never be. Met mm -hmm. by entering that, it's better just to look at the photographs. Mm -hmm. And then, so I bounce out. If you hadn't done that, I would have 
I wouldn't value that as much as I do. It would be more of a one-liner. Yeah, yeah, it really would be yeah. Um, yeah. A, a kind of a trick. But that, then, then you show me um, the possibilities that were actually um, research exercised at that place in history. Uh -huh. You know, these exercises or these attempts or these explorations um, to um, represent the unrepresented or represent the invisible, mm -hmm. not visible. And you do it there in such an astounding way. Mm. In that room I went in, I was, um, I thought that the walls had holes <coughs> in them with lights yes. shining yeah. through. Yeah. It's so skillfully and amazingly yeah. done. Mm. And it, it also, um, uh, if our you know, default setting is for um, literal representation, like Robert Bateman representation, um, what that room reminds me is, that, is how liberating abstraction is and what abstraction can be. Can do and the value of abstraction, mm -hmm. not just to say let's get rid of a subject, mm -hmm. but actually to <coughs> liberate you from always repeating the same mm -hmm. um, association with a picture that will go on forever if those pictures are reproduced. So, and I also like the fact that those are real spaces that exist, mm -hmm. they're nameable spaces, but they've been worked out of recognition, and you've also identified, you've also photographed parts of them that were not, um, probably not operating um, intentionally as what people are visiting. They're not, they didn't come to visit a corner like that, <laughs> or, or where this wall meets that wall. So you've taken these spaces that are our background, or they're not meant to be mm -hmm. remarked on, and you've foregrounded them and made them the subject of the pictures, and then those, the pictures, somehow have to deal with the walls and they get stuck to the walls, these bumpy But also color, I walls. think that made what's part of my piece is a color because each wall is a custom color uh, that I mixed based on the photograph. So the photograph would either disappear more into the wall. So so each each wall is a you know a, a specific color that I mixed. You know and, and and so I think like this, this idea of color is not always decoration, it can be function supportive. So in that, like I, I, I kind of worked with it too. But then it's invisible. Yeah, you, know, you, don't you know, but it's part of your sensory experience is the color of the walls is, 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 is part of, it's a big part of the piece. Like, the, like when Helga made the list, she was like paint, paint. Like now each one is about paint, each piece is about paint, so. Um, you know, that's, but that's the inconspicuous thing, too, that, um, that works that I like to play with. Works yeah. and we don't know yeah. 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 For me, there's a real ambiguity between, are, are these photographs? Are these photographs of paintings? Are they, yeah, yeah, that's are they on the wall? Did you get yeah, that makes me really them? happy, because that's yeah. really um, it was what really I was hoping to do, because then it's like that shifting identi identity of, Photography, drawing, painting, yeah, yeah. and then and then 3D, three D, three dimensional space, yeah. Yeah. So I'm really and, and grateful it's about that. It's what those artists dreamed about in a yeah. way. It's like the dream came true yeah. <laughs> after all these decades. So that the relationship of that to that is so important, so yeah. profound. And then this room is sort of where we retire to be home. You know, this is our place. Mm -hmm. This is presentation house. This is North Van. <laughs> this is the all that. Um, uh, attempts and longing to be of a very high level mm -hmm. of achievement in aesthetic mm -hmm. inquiry and mm -hmm. or in artistic activity and presentation house strives to do that with all of this uh, impediment mm -hmm. and trouble. Yeah. It's interesting how you did that room is kind of like set deck. Mm -hmm. This room is set deck. And that room not so much. That's art. Uh, and I was kind of curious about Presentation House, and then to look at Presentation House, we're looking at it in its history, not in its present day sense. Mm -hmm. I kind of wondered if you would have come into Presentation House, normal Presentation House, could you have photographed it? Or would there have been anything interesting? Uh, yes. Um, I mean, this is the interesting thing, even like the bag, and not that I'm not allowed to take photos in there, but you know, it's not such a dynamic space, and that's why I ended up using a lot of Guggenheim images because it's organic, there's more organic shapes, so it's more dynamic. It's, uh, 
it's just you know easier to create that optical uh, illusion than uh, like there was a show at the MoMA that was really dynamic and had these walls and different colors. I mean, I, I chose images that didn't have much color in them, but I do have a lot of images that have a lot of amazing colors and shadow, you know, so yeah, some of it, <coughs> some of it is it's easier. Because there has to be some kind of dynamic. But then the, like the one image that's very invisible on that wall, that's from Dia Beacon. And it's the corner of Agnes Martin's room. Agnes Martin has a room of all her paintings. And if you know Agnes Martin's work, it's just so simple, like sometimes grids, sometimes just lines. And so that was just a corner. Uh, and the, you know that's kind of pays homage to her. But you know it was it was just a simple, very you know simple representation. So. Yeah, I mean, it is, it a, is it an homage to her or an homage to the wall that holds her up? <laughs> I mean, it seems like a very working class show, right? Chairs, plugs, spaces, architecture, design, mm -hmm. you know, like, it's all uh, the stuff that makes it, yeah. makes Agnes look good. Huh. <laughs> I don't know, it seems to me, I don't know. You, you seem to draw attention to it. It's like it's like is that, spaces. An, is that an economic class or an no? I mean, more like I don't know. If, yeah, I don't know. A chair is kind of like the lumpen proletariat of the art world. You're yeah, but then there's all the, the the Corbusier benches and all the galleries, right? And like well, the design, and I don't know. Like, it's there's all this, like which is there is a chair like that over there. Or, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that one. Well, there are things that create the experience. So yeah. The experience, I guess. The servants of the Yeah, the servants. It's the servant the art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, under, under recognized. Yeah. Which I think color, you know, color, 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 under color is under recognized. Are those pieces color? Are they black and white or are they? Is They're color. color. They are yeah. color. Yeah. I drained some, I drained the colors out of them so they worked more of a, as a suite of photographs. Mm -hmm. You know, and also the car. I used. I took a piece of the carpet to the printer mm -hmm. so that we could get kind of keep in that tonal range, so that it was this very smooth experience. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I did drain some of the colors out of them, but otherwise, uh, straight up. Yeah. Mary, I'm curious still about this uh, room. This was where we started. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of skirt. Yeah. That exists and the wainscoting, which is so kind of attractive as a thing. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the original colors were? Yeah. Oh, if you if in the brochure, there's a there there's really um, specific descriptions of the, the the colors of the rooms, and it was like um, it's uh, all olive greens and dull salmon and yeah. And that the like the the back room the frames would have had been in white, yeah. and yeah there was definitely this certain specific choices. Um, so Steichen designed the space. Steichen had been to a space. It was called um, Dudley Gallery in in um, London, and this is where this photography society would meet for their meetings. And it was done by a designer that was influenced by Joseph Hoffman, so the Viennese Secessions. You know, so there's, it, and it, by the description, it's like there's the same ledge, the, the um, curtains, the burlap wall. I think also because arts and crafts was happening, and so there was the burlap, uh, you know, as this natural material, and so maybe it became popular uh, and it, because it, it reappeared again in the 70s. So. You know, um, but then you have, you made an interesting comment about things not coming in sheets at that period. That yeah, um, material. Before the Second World War, you couldn't get sheet material yeah. like plywood or sheet drywall or any drywall. Right. So, you know, for sheets, you had fabric, textiles, yeah. and um, animal skins. Right. <laughs> Those are the only big sheet materials. So, to make a volume, where you make a frame and you cover it with a volume. You can see they would do it with fabric to do mm -hmm. the testing, mm -hmm. and so 
So it means walls weren't done with sheet material, they were hand and plastered. Yeah. And then there'd be a lot of cracking happening. And so the only way to cover up the cracking, if it was my house, I would just put drywall over it, but they'd have to fill it in. So I think that the, the sheet material, the burlap, is to cover up all these indignities, all this mm -hmm. um, noise on the wall, mm -hmm. especially if they're trying to go a bit neutral. I don't know if they use the word neutral. They don't seem to be trying to go that neutral at that point in 1905. Not with that little skirt. Because <laughs> maybe they were covering up radiators. Yeah, there's also maybe a lot of noise yeah. under there. Yeah. yeah, well, it was also storage, creating mm -hmm. storage space, because it was really such tiny spaces. And then so they would put um, more, he would put more furniture. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking about this, what you started with about um, the how each one is kind of, you, each room is doing the same thing from a different lens, and then this idea of like both the value and repeating. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, do you, is there a repetition because it fails ultimately? Like, do you never, you, you were talking about um, an image and it being a presentation house and photography, and then, um, but you're really invested in objects and how, like, us in relation to those, but they're two totally different things. and. They, they never, or they don't, can they, or do you feel um, they can't be resolved in one way? It's like an image, and then you step into the image, and as soon as you're in the image, it's not an image anymore. Is that a factor in re -look in looking at them from different angles? I guess I, like my, my angle is more about like these places of display, you know, like without the, maybe without the objects. Um, uh, but those become the objects, like in this Yeah, they become, they, 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 that, they, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, so that's what repetition is, you do it, and, and each time you do it, it makes something redundant, so you're actually living in a redundancy mm -hmm. in a continual way, that's what's mm -hmm. debilitating about not moving on, <laughs> right. um, and um, that's what the the historical reenactor seems so unable to deal with um, ambiguity or flux or um, uh, change or hybrid, hybrid yeah, they don't want, you, you can't wear contemporary glasses. You can't, you yeah. know. Um, and so there's a, in this place, in this installation, there's this subject that you see in each room. You would say, if you discussed it, you'd come up with the same sort of sentence for each room. It's about this. Mm -hmm. But there's such a, a vastly different way of uh, looking at it as though, yeah, they all coexist and all the time. They coexist in probably multiple other views that maybe it's in Kelly's work over time that will always be a view of the subject of display. And this is just four out of myriad versions. This is the most ambitious I've seen so far. Yeah, actually, I did want to say that the, the text piece, because I like to repurpose my, I always repurpose my own work for uh, current exhibitions. So the text piece is about a stove. And when I, the SFU uh, space had this stove that I replicated from a Delacroix painting. And so, yeah, again, it's this two, you know, Painters starting with painting 3D <coughs> objects and then it becomes 2D and then I turned it into um, a sculpture and then and then it it comes up again with the with the text of this the, this the stove which is really kind of the like the heart of the I don't know like and it's very um, it's about the body I never literally use body but there are often figure references and. Uh, yeah, so that, that text is, it's a, it's, you, you might miss it entirely, but it was important for me to be repurposing other ideas or other work. And it's uh, the actual vinyl from the SFU mm -hmm. exhibition. One thing I was thinking about with this room is that we kind of ended up at this, this like the end of taste to a certain degree, that this is how we're going to look at art from here on in for the most part. Like we could look at an, at a, documentation of an exhibition from 2010 or from like to let's say the end of the slide of the PhD is 2006 mm -hmm. so let's say if we take it from the end of slides that museums and spaces that we look at art in now are kind of it kind of feels like they're going to look the same mm -hmm. for like until this 
I don't know if they're wherever this contemporary, this continual contemporary present that we're in, whenever that ends, everything is going to kind of look like that room. Where these are the rooms where we can like cite our taste and kind of historical mm -hmm. taste, but I think it's, it almost feels like this room, what you've done with it could just reproduce, you could not reproduce it, you'd be repeating it, but this, you could make so many of these because we're going to just be in this continual present of how we've decided art is going to look like because mm -hmm. we've eliminated any, any exhibit, we've eliminated anything that would cite it within history other than whatever the existing architecture might be. Right. So it's almost like because it's so tasteless, that's just, this is what it's going to be like from here on in, like not in a, or that's just, that was the but then, but then that's what, I mean, that's like, you know, everything at one point was gold frames. Yeah. You know, all this, what they call it, sky hanging, everything was multiple frames to the ceiling, mm -hmm. you know, wainscoting up to here, you know, so there, there was a long period of, of red walls that matched the gold frame, they felt like it matched the gold frames, and, mm -hmm. you know, so, I don't, you know, also we're engaging with the black box more, too, like there's, I mean, that's sort of a certain progression that's happened. I mean, this, this period of installation design was really about creating domestic, like, um, trying to make it feel like you're in domestic space, where even in this really heroic uh, historical spaces, they, they, they would cover up all those ornate details, and they would um, put velvet curtains on the doorways so it was more intimate, and then they put furniture in the shows. And, and you know, so there's, it's a trend. Mm -hmm. Who knows what it will be. I mean, I, can, yeah. I can't speculate, but I kind of feel like the we'll, trends are done. We'll be in that for a while, and yeah. yeah. I mean, you can see like colors are starting to happen more. Yeah. Also, like there was a period where things were really a lot of things were white, but then now co like colors are appearing. Mm -hmm. Some really bad colors are appearing mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, in galleries. Yeah. 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 And houses, but mostly galleries. Galleries. Yeah. yeah. I think these walls are really bad colors. Yeah, they they the, at the at the Paris. Yeah. Really oh yeah, she did. Characteristic and, and all of a sudden the ready made serves that characteristic and sort of the, the slippages and and I think you even see Patrick's points of sort of these uh, objects that we use you know the chair <laughs> or you know the, these objects that are uh, only ready made because of their utilitarian. Well, to follow up on that, <laughs> let's not forget that the urinal was sandwiched between a photograph by Stieglitz. And painting. But Marin. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe these chairs are just another form of urine. So. <laughs> and maybe just the history of the, the space and just it's all, all come come full turn, but uh, like Liz, that room does some sort of illusionistic sensory play that I don't know what I'm supposed to take of repetition anymore, photography anymore, mm -hmm. ready made anymore and, and uh, it's just another, um, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's necessarily about fashion to me, I think it's, or you know, fashion of, of how the space looks, but more about this like in, intangible effect of the ready-made and the photograph, the other mm -hmm. purpose they serve or something, the, the space we can't describe. Mm -hmm. just, you know, I and the way the critique <laughs> stops there, you know, once you find a way out of the problem, you don't have to do a critique anymore. The problem is over, and you can just then move on to, is there a critique of free zone? What do you call a critique free zone? Is it, uh, uh, well, it's the white light, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so um, any discussion of history is so fraught. And then I go there, I don't, I don't feel like 
like I'm talking about the doodle, thinking about the doodle, and I'm not thinking about any of that. I'm thinking about what I like to do, which is look, <coughs> look at things and feel the looking and, mm -hmm. and look with my body and not know what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. So it's more like an experience mm -hmm. than a discussion. Dissolves. Yeah. Dissolves a little. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought that was going to be the experience. That's the funny thing, because that's what the museums think. They think, oh, they'll trick them, and they'll think they're in a cannery. <laughs> they'll think there's real fish here. Right, right. By their village. Yeah. I felt like I was walking into a photograph with a punta or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what? I felt like I was walking, I felt like part of this, you know, punctum. Oh, OK. <laughs> was, yeah. But yet it was, it was actually a sculpture or yeah. um, an actual space. It's actual you know, space, but it wasn't actual space. space, it's a photograph of actual <laughs> space. Yeah. But so hybridized by the time it's stuck on the wall and this little cut on the back, did you notice the little cut of this photograph that turns the corner? Mm -hmm. It's cut up so it's not a rectangle anymore and it sort of uh, creates this other illusion of um, perspective and that, um, you know, the other trick to make a, um, a space on a two-dimensional surface. It's um, yeah, it adds dimension to the shadow. Yeah, yeah. It's just a shadow on the edge of the wall. Yeah. Yeah. 